Well, hello everyone and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I'm your host as always, Richard Tiemann, and this is the award-winning fan show. That's right, everyone's a fan of something, and we've got something for every fan, especially those fans that enjoy lucrative contracts, name changes, and uh, reboots or resurrections of popular television series. That's right, we got a little something for everybody today, like we try to, but I really feel that we're going to cover kind of the whole spectrum that is the fan show. Uh, Not a whole lot going on in the outdoor world right now. All-Star Bass Fishing and Just Fishing TV are hard at work, though, because it is the season for fishing. I wish I was doing more of it. But wrestling uh, is doing what wrestling can. I think the only division that really doesn't have a whole lot going on for itself right now is the music division, which breaks my heart because although I'm not saddened by the fact that technically the last concert I saw was Motion City's uh, concert in uh, Milwaukee in Minnesota um, back in February on Valentine's Day weekend, uh, I'm fine with that being the last one that I've seen, but I don't want it to be the last one that I ever see. So I'm hoping we get live music back sooner than later to the capacity that we all know and love it, right? Uh, Toby Keith is coming to Sioux Falls. I got no- I got nothing for you on that one. I'm not really a Toby Keith fan, but I guess if you're hungry enough for live music in a concert-like setting, that's that's your jam then pun intended (laughs) anyway so there is plenty going on everywhere else in fact today we will have our uh, real film recommendation from the real film nerds themselves Uh, another little plug for some friends of mine as well as the return of the fat bearded vinyl guy matt carwick for what he's spinning today now then let us get right to it with today's headlines Headlines, of course, brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. They want to customize your world, and they can do it in a variety of ways. Just go to their website, dynamiteenterprises.com, or really the best way to see everything that they've done and can do is by following their Instagram, which is Dynamite Enterprises. Seriously, I mean, don't just take my word for it. If you have social media in the form of Instagram, you should give them a follow, uh, and then follow the fan show while you're at it. Don't forget that. And then also because of our special guest today, uh, Mr. Uh, Darrell Lee Owens, follow Legacy Maker Sports Network. Um, so there's a few follow suggestions for you, but the, I digress. The point is, is that Dynamite Enterprises is a great follow because chances are they've customized something that you haven't even thought could be customized or that you may want to have custom made. So they do stickers, they do tablecloths, they do backdrops, they do shirts, polos, hats, probably socks, not sure about underwear yet, and they do trophies, awards, plaques, I mean, you name it, and you have the artwork or logo for it, they can slap it on there. And I was reaching for a sticker, I have this one from Full Sail, Uh, this is one that I got, their sports division, doesn't that look like the setup right here? You got a laptop. You got a football, you got the credential. I mean, this sticker was made for me and the fan show. But actually, quite literally, this sticker was made for me and the fan show from Dynamite Enterprises. And they can customize your world. (coughs) Excuse me. Don't mind if I take a drink of the drink that I'm not sponsored by. Mm -mm -mm. (coughs) I would love to be sponsored by Pure Leaf Tea or Rain energy drink come to think of it we're going to keep headlines a little bit shorter and sweeter today because my interview my special guest today mr Darrell Lee owens we went a little bit longer but for good reason we had a great conversation um just about the two big topics today normally hot topic is just one singular subject but today it is two and we had a great discussion about both. You can catch me on his series One on One with uh, shortly after the airing of this brand new episode of The Fan Show. So, <coughs> <coughs> let us begin. Today's headlines, we have the Pat Mahomes contract, $503 million over 10 years is what he's potentially worth. I mean, my goodness. We knew his contract was going to be a big one. I don't think we were quite expecting it to be that big. 
And for those of you that just said, that's what she said, air five. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say it. Well, I can. I don't feel like I should say it on the show. But if you're saying it with me at home, then good on you. Clearly, you're a true fan of the fan show. Back on track. The Redskins will probably not be the Redskins anymore come the 2020 season kickoff, which we're already in 2020. The clock is ticking. And uh, Darrell Lee Owens actually covers the Redskins, though he's a Packers fan. And he said there's been a lot of talk, and I think there's a few different routes they might take for this. But inevitably, we all believe it is happening. In fact, I saw earlier today, before I recorded this portion of the show, that it looks like they might be the Washington Warriors, be it permanently or temporarily. And a lot of people like that because that means they can keep the colors and the logo. Uh, They'd have to ditch the R, obviously, because what would R have to do with Warriors or Washington? Um, But... It's not all lost. Clearly, there's some way to salvage it. I kind of think that they should take this as an opportunity to just redo the whole thing. Um, It's a great chance in today's world to hear the fans' voices, feel the room, see what they would like to have the team be known as moving forward. Just get them involved. So we also touch on that a little bit. Um, IFL Columbus, for your IFL update, the Columbus team that was supposed to debut 2021 has decided to hold off until 2022. Some of you saw that article go around. I forgot to touch on it last week, but um, I'm wondering why, and I have yet to hear back as to why, because of all the teams that would seem like they are going to be locked, loaded, and ready to go for 2021 they would be it because they were already the team that was going to be ready to go for 2021. But they're going to push it back another year. What does that mean for the rest of the IFL? Apparently the Duke City Gladiators have a big announcement coming up later on either this week or next week, I think. So stay tuned for more details on that. But it is all quiet throughout the rest of the IFL, except for the Iowa Barnstormers. Yesterday was Iowa Barnstormers Day because it was on this day in fan show history that Iowa got its first ever championship. The Iowa Barnstormers defeated the Sioux Falls Storm in one of the best United Bulls I've ever had the privilege and pleasure of being in attendance for. And it was a great game. Uh, Really, just the whole day was awesome. Um, We'll uh, come back to that a little bit more. But congratulations again to the Iowa Barnstormers, the 2018 United Bowl champions. Unsolved Mysteries is back. That's right. (laughs) The most terrifying show that you can recall if you're a 90s kid. Because I think it was that... In the X-Files that were back-to-back on Friday nights, so there was never a more terrifying block of television than those two. But it's back on Netflix, but without a host. And I feel like that was the smart move, because Robert Stack, you simply do not replace Robert Stack. You can try, but all these series and programs and movies that we see getting reboots or resurrections... They tend to replace a pivotal character or the host altogether, and then people always say, well, it's not the same without so-and-so. So So we have a new, a a revival of the series that does not have a host at all because they probably felt we can't replace him. So why even try? Some people said it's weird without the host. Okay, but who would you have replaced him with? That's, That's my big question, but I've watched all the way through it, some episodes more than just one time, and it it's good. Uh, it is still just as good as I remember. Uh, I think I'm probably more involved in the series now because I'm older, <laughs> but man, uh, they really outdid themselves. Uh, really, really good. Speaking of real, I have a really good recommendation for you, or should I say the boys of the real film nerds for this week's Real Film Recommendation. What's up, Fan Nation? My name is Matt. I am one of two hosts of the Real Film Nerds podcast, and with me is my other host, Mysterious Mike. How you doing, everybody? And Mysterious Mike is COVID protected up because he is in a hot spot on the East Coast, which uh, I think is the only place that's hotter than uh, Arizona with the Rona right now. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. So, Mike, we do a podcast every week, once a week, to typically a half hour to an hour long about a movie. Right now, there are no movies because the theaters are shut down. Kind of sucks ass. So, Mike, we mostly do what? Streaming films? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, we mostly do streaming films now, and uh, we're going to be reviewing a movie uh, on Amazon uh, Prime Video, and it's uh, called 7500, and it's a movie about terrorists and planes and the takeover, so it sounds like a lot of fun. Well, all right, everyone, come check us out, realfilmnerds.com. Uh, we're everywhere you can find podcasts. Just search Real Film Nerds, and it's R E E L. Uh, Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Come check us out. Take a listen. Right now, we're mostly doing streaming movies and older movies, but hopefully the theaters open back up and we can start doing new movies again. Thanks again, Fan Nation, for checking us out. Thanks. Thanks, guys. So now, other... Headlines before we get into our special guest segment. Uh, Fighter Fest Night 1 happened. It was a good one. Night 2 happens tonight. Big matchup, of course. Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. Um, these two guys are quite the characters in the wrestling world, so I'm very excited to see how that one goes. Uh, WWE unveiled its new United States championship belt i didn't feel that it needed an update or a new look but nonetheless we got one because that's what wwe does and just like that the intercontinental title is still the ugliest belt that they have in wwe you can fight me if you want to but that belt is ugly it was the single-handedly most beautiful belt that they had on the roster and then in an instant it went to ugliest and with even the facelift of the U.S. Championship, it is still the ugliest title on the roster. You can say what you want about the Universal ones, but um, yeah, that is just some ugly belt. I'm not a fan of it at all. Um, And then, let's see, don't forget to give us a follow on all the major social media. I feel like I forgot that last week. Uh, It is Twitter. At Fan Show Official, Instagram The Fan Show, YouTube. We finally have a custom YouTube URL thanks to you fine people of Fan Nation. It is youtube.com slash C slash The Fan Show. We have over 110 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And speaking of new YouTube channels and guys that are doing the YouTube thing, you know him, you love him. He's the fat bearded vinyl guy. Matt, what are you spinning today? Hey Fan Nation, I'm Matt, the Fat Bearded Vinyl Guy, and I'm once again hanging out here in the vinyl lair. Today I'm spinning the most recent record from one of my favorite current artists, Feral Roots by the band Rival Sons. Feral Roots was released on January 25th, 2019, and it is the band's sixth album. This album was a step ahead in songwriting for the band. Some acoustic work, some slower stuff, but still the Zeppelin-esque fuzz-heavy riff blues rock I've come to love about Rival Sons. This album was also nominated for two Grammys, for Best Rock Album and Best Rock Performance for the song Too Bad. Some of my favorite tracks from the album include Do Your Worst, the aforementioned Too Bad, and the title track Feral Roots. I first heard of Rival Sons several years ago from a podcast I was listening to at the time. They were talking to drummer Michael Miley and said they had a real classic rock sound. So I decided to check them out and was not disappointed. If you like that old school fuzz guitar sound, you'll love Rival Sons. The Instagram handle for guitarist Scott Holiday is literally Mr. Fuzz Lord. I did a Wednesday playlist on fatbeardedvinylguide.com some time ago, so if you want to check out some of my favorite Rival Sons cuts, you can check that out. I think Rival Sons is a band that's just on the cusp of getting really big. In addition to the two Grammy nominations, they also opened for Black Sabbath on their final tour. All they need is that one really great song to get them to the next level. But that's just my two cents. That's all for now. For more music, talk, and vinyl shenanigans, check out fatbeardedvinylguide.com. You'll find links to my social media, Facebook and Instagram, as well as my new YouTube channel. Thank you, Matt. And again, thank you, guys. Make sure that you go give him a follow and subscribe to his page. And uh, he's uh, really trying a lot of new stuff, and I applaud him for that because I feel like it's uh, it's 
he's got a great musical taste. He does. Uh, if I ever wanted a recommendation from classic rock or something which I'm a fan of, I'm going to go to the Fat Bearded Vinyl Guy because Matt is not only an amazing photographer, but he has a keen taste in music. So that will bring us to the highlight of the show. We teased them a little bit at the beginning as far as the Pat Mahomes contract and uh, the Redskins potentially changing their name. Looks like it's going to happen. But when you have two subjects as big as these ones, why not bring in a resident expert who can touch on a bit of both of them? So without further ado, here is the segment with my special guest for the week, Darrell Lee Owens of Legacy Maker Sports Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, returning to the fan show, the man himself behind Legacy Maker Sports Network, Mr. Rollback, a.k.a. D-Lo, Darrell Lee Owens. How you doing, man? Welcome back to the show. Man, I'm doing phenomenal, Rich. How you been, brother? Been good, keeping busy, and obviously sports, you know, they're kind of slow rolling at this point, but now we've got a few things to talk about. In fact, normally... My hot topic is just one thing, if that, but we've got kind of two, which is why I wanted you here, uh, because you do cover the Redskins. Uh, you're a Packers fan who lives in Virginia that covers the Redskins. So however, you know, people want to make sense of that. <laughs> but I am uh, wearing, you acknowledged, you know, when we first got on the Zoom, my attire for the occasion, uh, Washington Sentinels. Flacco jersey or Falco. Wow, that's an insult to Falco. <laughs> Shane Falco jersey, not Flacco jersey. But as somebody that covers them, I figured, you know, okay, so here we are. We're, it, it looks like there's going to be a name change. In your years of covering the team, like what has the vibe been like that you've been there and how often did the name come up and people's feelings about if it needed to change or not? Well, it, it's funny because every training camp uh, we've been to the last two training camps that the the two that I've been to, there's been a couple of um, you know um, people that have protested outside of the uh, of the facility uh, with signs all day in the heat, walking back and forth, back and forth, uh, protesting the name and you know how it made some Native Americans feel. Now you you'll catch a whole bunch of Native Americans that say, "Hey, man, it doesn't. That's not the way I feel about it. it it's a badge of honor." But then there are some Native Americans that take it a little bit deeper and say that, hey, man, this 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 name is slander. And, and I, I didn't go super deep in my research, but from what I hear, most people consider it or some of the fan base consider it just as bad as the N-word, um, you know, or, or not fan base, but at least some of the Native Americans consider it just as bad as the N-word uh, in, in, in its meaning. Um, but, you know, for me, it, it's been a buzz for a while. A couple of years back, they had talked about it. It started making some buzz. Like it, the, the, the noise got a little bit louder. And then Dan Snyder kind of shut that down and was like, I will never change the name. Uh, he had interviews. You know, people tried to get him to say he would change it. And he said, I'll never change it. And then, of course, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter situation, um, everything with George Floyd pops up. And, you know, as you know, just like I know, Racism in this country has um, taken itself to another level in the last couple of uh, months. Uh, you know, some, you know, it's just, it's been really rough. Uh, you know, the rare skin thing kind of popped up all of a sudden again when somebody was like, well, all this is going on. Why won't the rare skin change your name? And it, and it just caught fire. Then it went from all, all of a sudden Pepsi, FedEx, um, and then uh, Nike all are saying like, uh, we're not going to, do anything but once they took that money away <laughs> once they once i went on the nike site and they said no redskins uh apparel was available i said oh this bad boy is changing yeah and it's interesting the timing of it because you're right the culture throughout the country has really changed and so now we're starting to see a lot of change where does the line get drawn how far is too far and I think we can all agree, though, that the Redskins being the name of the team in the nation's capital, one, that's just weird to me. Like, again, how do you right. come to this name for the team in the nation's capital? Yeah. Um, but two, just I, I don't know why it's taken so long. I know that in past years, when the climate 
wasn't what it is that we've seen lately that I was just like, look, mm-hmm. it's been that way for so long. Like, why change it? Like, if nobody was putting up a fuss, then why now? But, of course, we have social media now and people's voices that you wouldn't normally hear. You're hearing now because of that. And I know a few people that were like, it's not even the Native Americans that are upset. It's the Karens of the world that are upset, you know? <laughs> they want to speak to the NFL's manager and get this whole thing sorted out. And so I think if it's the right people, if it's the right voices that are saying, okay, seriously, like, let's, we can do better, then I think we should do better. So that's, that's my thoughts. That's why I wanted to see what the vibe was in your time covering the team. For the most part, you'll be. I, I'm not. Gonna, uh, you, I guess you would kind of be surprised because most fans don't want the name to change, Native American or you know just regular fans in general. And people, so I'm like, well, well, what's wrong with? No one sees what's wrong with it at all, um, you know. And for me, like I said, I I can understand, you know, uh, for those who want to get it changed. Uh, but it is a weird name to be in Washington because I'm not saying that there weren't Indians in Washington, but that's not what it's known for. If that was in Virginia, I'd probably say, yeah, because we had the power 10 Indians here. And, you know, that was a big deal. Uh, but, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. All of the other Washington teams, you know, you got the Wizards, which is still a weird, but I mean, Washington Wizards, I guess it rhymes. Uh, you got uh, the Capitals, which makes complete sense. You got the Mystics, who, you know, they're bouncing off of the uh, Wizards. But it's just like, just the the risk and name when it comes to that, yeah, you would think it would be more like the the generals or it'd be something in, you know, that, you know, military form that's patriotic. I would say if I had to tell you, I said eighty percent of the Redskin fans, true to heart Redskin fans, don't want it to change. Well so if they if, some, yeah. if they change it, you gotta go and buy all new jerseys and merch, you know? Which yeah. it might be one of the, the pettiest reasons out there, but it is a reason nonetheless. Anytime a team changes anything, logos, colors, whatever, fans feel compelled to go out and, well, now i got to buy all new stuff. But, you know, I, I like to support my team however I can, and for the average fan, that's through merch, you know. And they've got their outfits picked out. They're superstitious above all things. <laughs> So if you go and you rebrand, you do different colors, because I remember Spokane, when they moved from the Arena Football League to the Indoor Football League, they had to rebrand the whole thing because the name, for whatever reason, was owned by the league and not by the owners of the team. Long story, for a different time. But they went from orange and blue to orange and black, so they did keep that orange, And so a lot of fans were able to wear their orange jerseys and apparel. Um, Even if it said shock, it's still, you know, the arena had that feel of unity. Mm -hmm. But when they did so, I mean, the shock is a great name and really holds a lot of value in the world of arena. And that's what they are back to now. But they changed for that brief period of time to the Empire, which in the Inland Northwest, an empire has a lot of meaning to it. So I think there's opportunity for something similar with a Washington football team and having some, because here I am in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, it would make way more sense for us to have a team called the Redskins. And I'm not saying it would be socially acceptable to have that, but it would make way more sense here than in Washington, (laughs) DC. I think that the way this is going to probably end up going uh, personally, and we know that uh, Ron Rivera and Dan Snyder are working together and, you know, Ron Rivera being, you know, you know, being, uh, I believe, and if I'm not mistaken, he's part of Native American. And so he kind of, you know, he, he if you're going to go to anybody for insight on this one, he's probably one of the best people to have on your side. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it, it's it's almost like, it's almost weird timing. You hire Ron Rivera, this crisis happens. If you, it, you're, you know, you have what, the only Native American coach in the, the, in, the head coach in the NFL, he's on your team. Who's going to be the one to help make your decision? Well, you got Ron Rivera. Uh, and, but if it was me, I, I think you go with the Warriors uh, for a name because, you know, a lot of people kind of tend to have heard the Renegades. If you want something that, you know, I think if you're looking to keep the logo, if you're looking to keep, um, you know, the colors and you don't want to change too much, but just change the name so people can like, you know, kind of, you know, calm down on that end. 
I think the Warriors, um, maybe the Renegades will probably be one of those two teams that people look at. You know, you hear, oh, it's Arena League, which I know your fan base is not going to like <laughs> to hear that because they, every time they hear, oh, it's Arena League or it's Madden or something like that, which is, you know, if in, in my opinion, Arena League jerseys and, and, and names are awesome because the colors are off the chain. And it's like it's like a fantasy thing. It's like, oh, I want those. But anywho, that, <laughs> that's just me. But. Yeah, I think you go Renegades or you go Warriors here because if you do Renegades, you could put the R in the helmet that you already have. You just change your Renegades. You can use that as your logo. If you wanted to, you can use their um, – they have their uh, throwback jerseys that they use for homecoming, and they have the uh, arrow on the side with the colors. You can go Warriors there if you want to leave that. Um, you know, And like I said, if you just want to keep the logo itself, you can just keep the logo and just change the name to the Warriors. You don't have to change the seats. You don't have to spend all the money in there. Yet. I mean, obviously, you'll spend a lot of money on change names, all that, all the, the merchandise and that, but it'll be a lot less work if you change colors and all that stuff. I, I mean, I've, they've got a really big decision to make on their hands, and, and they don't have a lot of time to make all of this flip around because the season starts in but two months, and they don't have that much time at all. So you're on board with let's make as little change as possible so that it's enough, though, that everybody's happy instead of taking this as an opportunity to kind of, you know, redo the whole thing. Because I really liked when you shared some options that a friend of yours had made, the Washington Mm -hmm. veterans, the color scheme, the name and everything. You know, I, I almost feel like this could be an opportunity to, to go big and to just redo the whole thing. Do you know what the, the deadline is? Like, would this be a change effective for the 2020 season? The, from what I've been hearing, it's going to if, the, if the, 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 they make the change, the change is going to be for this season. They've got a lot of decisions to make in the next couple of weeks. I don't know how they're going to make it, man. They might have to flip a coin in the room, paper, rock, scissors tournament. I'd love to see them utilize uh, a logo and color from a defunct league. They, you know, DC Defenders, uh, San Diego had the fleet. You know, um, <laughs> they could easily be the fleet. I thought that was a solid logo and and color scheme that they had for the AAF. But the Defenders, yeah. So there's there's some stuff to do. I think you're right, though. Uh, given the timetable of everything, will kind of determine how they approach this. I, I think ultimately, though. You probably want to take this as an opportunity to redo the whole thing, even if you do it after this season. Uh, you do like a band aid on it right now, and then you put it up to a fan vote, you know, make them feel included because you know that, you know, something like this can kind of divide your fans. And if you make them feel more included and more like it's up to them, then they, nine times out of ten, tend to accept it more as their own than you know hating change because we all hate change anyway so that's yeah you know that's that's just who we are (laughs) that's just who we are so the other topic uh, we'll try to keep this one a little bit shorter because i feel like everybody's kind of exhausted talking about it but i mean (laughs) my goodness 503 million dollars is what pat mahomes is potentially (laughs) worth and now like i said on social media i don't hate the contract i just think the timing is bad because he still had not one but two years on his current yeah. one so he was he wasn't in a contract year just won a super bowl but this is a guy who's had injury before and has had to sit him out and thankfully their team was good enough where they won more of those games than they lost without him right. which i think calls into question you know like is he really worth all of this which everyone in kansas city is going to say absolutely 100 percent, he's worth it because he just got us to the promised land and now we're we're going to win the next 10 super bowls in a row well for that price you better you know so you what's yeah, yeah, yeah. You what, what's your thoughts on this contract with uh mr pat mahomes so my thing is this uh with mahomes situation I wouldn't have thought it would have been a 10 year deal. I, if you'd have told me mentally, if I said, I said, okay, it probably will. It, we all, we all kept saying, Oh, it's going to be about 40 million a year. Everybody kind of expected it to be 40 million a year, not 50, but it was, we all expected about 40 million a year. And we thought, okay, maybe he'll be there, you know, five, maybe six years or something like that. You know, that that's logical. Uh, but when I was sitting at home, and that thing came across my screen and said 10 years. I said, what? I can't wait to see the numbers on this. And then, and I, and I had to bring, I have to bring my, my, my tablet in for this because I thought this was crazy. So <laughs> one second, every second, my man is making a dollar 60 cent. He is then making uh, every minute $96 per minute. 
he's making five thousand seven hundred and forty two dollars per hour he's making five thousand dollars an hour then on a day he's making one hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars uh pretty much per hour almost thirty eight thousand and then of course the year he's making 50 and the 503 for the year what could i do to make 96 dollars a minute i mean <laughs> come on what else can we ask for man i'm telling you when i saw it i said this is crazy um but here's the thing i think some people will criticize the move but most people was like eh, that's about right that's that's how everybody thinks because they everybody thinks kansas city has the next aaron Rodgers. But let's be honest, for the next 10 years. But the problem is you don't want him to be the next Aaron Rodgers for the 10 years. Why? Because you want more Super Bowls. Take it from a Packers fan. You want to see more Super Bowls. So now if he wins just one more Super Bowl, you're like, okay, at least my man got at least another Super Bowl and at least he breaks that. But I think in order for this contract to truly, you can feel like and say, all right, man, I felt like he did his job. He's got to win. This is the expectations, but he's got to win at least three to four. He's got one in there, so he's locked in. He's got to win at least two or three more. And I'd be like, yeah, man, I mean, he was worth every bit of the money. But it, it's still <laughs> crazy. And and from it's what I've heard money. now, because everybody sees the, the knee-jerk number and has that mm-hmm. reaction, and it's like with the whole Cam Newton deal, I said, okay, but what – what does the structure look like? Like, what are the incentives? What are the outs? You know, is he really getting right. the bare minimum or is there more to it than that? Because people don't look at that next page. They just read the headline and then that's it's it. Like, yeah, so right. I've heard that there's a lot of outs. I've heard there's a lot of ifs, 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 you know, both for incentives and for getting out. But then I, I just saw before you and I connected here on Zoom that apparently there's a lot of it going to uh, some type of COVID relief for those affected by coronavirus. Now, my question would be, because that's great and all, but why wouldn't you have that be its own thing where that's like a team donation and then the contract is adjusted as such? Because I'm not saying I don't believe it, but it's just like that is just such an ungodly number to throw out there. Yeah, that it's it just true. I don't care how much you're given to them because that just seems like you know there's people really struggling and so the timing to me seems a little insensitive I'm not saying he's not worth it but right. we've seen more often than not a guy sign a big contract and it spelled doom now Mahomes yeah. seems to be immune to any type of curse granted I haven't believed in the Madden curse since Barry Sanders was on it because it's like how can he be cursed by being on right. the Madden cover you know, um, but then people argue Antonio Brown, but whatever. So he was on the cover. He wins the Super Bowl that year. And so now he's signing a mega deal, which we've seen with Flacco, with Rodgers, which with Kaepernick. Whenever they signed a mega deal, that next year was horrible. And yeah, Flacco, was his was his bad. stock, his stock went down so fast. And Aaron Rodgers has been dealing with injury. You know, every other year. Kaepernick's not even in the league anymore for reasons unrelated. I get it. Whatever. (laughs) But if if I'm a true fan and understand what history tells us and I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm like, this this makes me nervous. I'd be nervous. I I mean, it's it, it almost goes with anybody when it comes to big contracts. I mean, you get a big contract. It's almost like doom. It's it's very rare that you. I mean, look at Zeke. You know, Zeke get that big money and, and he does. He had a decent year, but he's not the Zeke year you had the years before. Todd Gurley gets the money, and that's why they don't pay running backs. His year goes down, and, and every and you know Aaron. Aaron numbers haven't been terrible, but they haven't been Aaron like a couple of years ago. They're not great. So like that, people get paid, and it's like it's not. I don't know if they relax. I don't know if it's the expectations. I don't know what it is. But I tell you one thing, if you're Dak Prescott right now, you're smiling from ear to ear because you know <laughs> that you made the right move by waiting because he would have, if he decided that contract, he'd have been set up. And now he's going to look and say, well, look what Pat Mahomes got. I want this. Deshaun Watson started tweeting out the day it happened tomorrow. I'm ready for my contract right now. So he was already ready for his contract. And, and so it's like, if you're one of those teams, you got to be thinking, oh my God. How I'm going to pay my quarterback this? What is that going to do to the rest of my team? Uh, so I don't know. I mean, but if I'm Dak Prescott, I'm smiling right now because I know I'm getting paid. 
I, I don't know if I'm smiling if I'm Dak Prescott. I think Watson's smiling, yeah, because he's Deshaun yeah. Watson. But what you just said, you know, you're like, your Dak Prescott going and be like, hey, look what Pat Mahomes got paid. And Jerry Jones and company are just like, yeah, look at what Pat Mahomes oh, got yes, paid. <laughs> okay? Not Dak. Super Bowl yeah. winning MVP Pat Mahomes. Mahomes. <laughs> I mean, he. I, I mean, he's making fifteen million dollars more than the next highest paid quarterback. Yeah, fifteen million dollars more. Good God, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy, man. But so I'm glad they're getting paid, though. It, yeah, like I said, you know, you win a Super Bowl, you should get paid because I, I always said Russell Wilson, when he finally got paid, he wasn't getting paid for what he was about to do. He was getting paid for what he already did for that franchise, you know, and right, right, right. and I feel like it's a very similar feeling to what we're seeing in Kansas City. But, uh, hey, man, your insight always appreciated. I will tell you that you were born in the wrong era if you wanted to find out what job you could do to make that kind of money a minute. Because back in the 90s, you dial one nine hundred and something. You could make a pretty lucrative living by the minute. I- I'm just saying, you know. All right, man. Well, hey, I love what you're doing with the uh, Legacy Maker Sports Network. And, of course, uh, you're doing your one-on-ones. I'm one of them. That's going to be uh, yes, later later tonight, I think. So um, that's going to yes, be awesome. Yes, uh, you guys will want to tune in for that, but really, uh, me and Daryl, we're we're just you know yin and yang in this uh, do-it-yourself uh, sports industry of broadcasting and, and coverage. So I res- have a tremendous amount of respect for you, my friend, and uh, sky's the limit for you. So hey, you take care. Thanks for stopping by, and have a great rest of your night. Thank you, brother. You take care of yourself as well. And one more big shout out to Darrell. Um, that dude, like, look, it, when it comes to this industry. And this level where you have established yourself, you've built your own brand, and even though you may not be recognized to the capacity that you would like to be, you do it. You grind. You put in the time, the energy, you do the blood, sweat, the bloopers, all of it. There's probably a lot of tears mixed in there as well. But it gets very competitive, right? Because there's a person who maybe knows more people and they're just happen to be like more popular than you but their product isn't as good and so that can get frustrating because you've put in the time to make your product as good as possible and somebody's getting more likes and views simply because of who they are and then at the same time on the flip side there could be somebody who maybe doesn't have the best personality but they put out a quality product as far as the production value and the things like that so it Very cutthroat, very competitive. There's not a lot of friends. There's a lot of acquaintances, but not a whole lot of friends in this industry at this level. But I consider Darrell Lee Owens a great friend. He's a grinder, and he gets it, most of all. So I'm happy to have him on the show anytime to throw him a guest anytime he wants. Support him, give him a share, give him a like. Because he, in all honesty, of all the people that I've seen attempt to do this... Uh, to give it a go and stick around for a while and then eventually give up. He's still doing it, and he still does it well. So remember to go and give him a shout and a like and a follow. Subscribe if you can't watch live. And, of course, that is through YouTube. Facebook is where we premiere our brand-new episodes every Wednesday. But if you're not a visual person, you're an audio, then you can subscribe through iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. So remember, folks, until next time, it's not official unless it's fan show official, and we are officially out of here. So best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks! Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his own player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.